And that's all I took, but I have. And that's pretty standard what it looks like. Yeah. It's not like this like ongoing persistent thing. It's kind of like, you know, she'll sit there and growl at you. And then if you kind of move in a way she doesn't like, it's like a quick snap like yeah. that. Okay. And have you tried like, have you tried correcting her for it with the e-collar or anything like that? We, we did a few, so like this first started happening like last November and yeah. we, tried to consult the past trainer we had used. Sure. She didn't really contact us. And so we consulted like a few other ones, but a lot of people were like, we've never had experience with this, but yeah. this is what I think you can try. And so we did do a few kind of reps of like, we put a muzzle on her and left the e-collar on her, like going in the crate, lying down, like us moving up towards it and then like shutting it. And then like we would correct with the e-collar, but I didn't feel super confident about and I didn't want to keep doing it. Yeah, sure. Like made it worse. Yeah. So I understand. Other than that, though. Okay, I got you. All right, well, let's do this. We're gonna take her over this way. Uh, we're gonna take her into our other unit here. I wanna just take a look at just kind of how your training looks overall, you know? Yeah, food. She, she'll be like extra on edge if we're doing like a training session and then she hears, you know, like noises. So if we're like in the backyard, if just a person's walking by, normally that wouldn't yeah. make her go crazy. But if I'm doing a training session with her in the backyard and like she knows there's food out, then she'll be extra aggressive towards the person. Okay. And um, <clears throat> do you do a lot of like walks and stuff with her? We usually walk at least once a day, okay. either in the morning or in the evening after the sun goes down. And how's her, I know you said she gets a little reactive to dogs and stuff. How's her walking typically? She, I mean, she does great if there's not that many distractions. Yep. Okay. I got gotcha. you. All right. So, so what, what we're going to do next here is we're actually going to take her, um, we're going to take her on a little bit of a trip around the corner to this busy park because I want to see what her behavior is like around like other distractions and stuff. A lot of times coming here into the facility initially, you're not going to see uh, quite as much out of the dog just because of the fact that it's a little overwhelming because there's so many freaking dogs and smells and stuff like that everywhere. So I like to kind of take them out and about and see if we see anything like when we're actually out, you know? Uh, and that'll give me an idea as far as if we're seeing what you're seeing or not, you know? Um, but, and, and this is such a consistent issue that I see when people bring in dogs like yours, right? Where they're such freaking intelligent dogs, obviously, right? She's a Malinois, right? Yeah. And they learn stuff so well and they're typically so motivated, right? And it's like, God, like we could do all the training to the moon and back with them, you know? We could teach this dog any trick that we want to teach her, right? And she'll do it perfectly fine, right? But the, the, the one outlying thing that remains is we have a hard time really understanding how to appropriately and effectively discipline our dog for things. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, it, it was the same deal with my, my Malinois, right? As, as early on when I got him, everything was done with the food, right? Which is awesome, right? Like you have a great working relationship with this dog, you can tell, right? But the problem is right now, I think she's probably seeing you a little too much as the treat dispenser with things. And when she gets uncomfortable by things and the food drive isn't enough to override that, you lose all control because we don't have that underlying kind of respect established or leadership established where she knows when I'm stressed, I could look to you for guidance as opposed to just feeling like I need to handle it on my own. And what happens is as they mature, like a year, a year and a half, stuff like that. As they consistently see that we don't have those situations, like we don't got it, right? It's almost like they build up this kind of like resentment sometimes because they're so, they get themselves into these like overwhelmed, stressed out freaking states of mind, right? And, and then it's like they kind of start just like redirecting it all over the place onto things. And it could like really get out of hand really quickly, you know? Which sounds like is kind of exactly it's what you're like seeing. What it's yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and another thing, she, it, it's probably just us not understanding her body language, but like she'll, it seems like, like she'll be really like, I want you to pet me, I want you to sure. pet me. And then like even on her place bed when like one of us will get home from work, yeah. we go over, we start petting her, we start petting her stomach and then she'll start grabbing. She's like, yeah. you. So, so here's the thing, right? Like, <laughs> 
a part of this is learning how to combat some of those behavioral issues, and a part of it is understanding our dog, right? You know, it's, it's hilarious. Right before you got here, like, I, I just got in from out of town, and uh, I boarded my dogs here, and I gave my Malinois a bath, right, before I came here. And he was actually better with it than he <laughs> usually is, right? And listen, I'm not scared this dog is gonna bite me at all. Like, we're past that. He knows that, like, there's boundaries, and he knows that's a boundary he's not passing. But if I'm, like, doing his nails and stuff like that, and he gets a little extra, extra squirmy and he doesn't like it, like he'll start growling, you know? And it's it's one of those things where it's like, I don't give a shit. Cause it's like, dude, like I'm doing your freaking nails right now. And like, you growl at me all day long, but like, I'm not gonna stop. It's like, have you ever seen the videos that went viral like a year or so ago on like TikTok and stuff of the Rottweiler and the owners like doing stuff and this dog's like, right? Just like looking like a freaking monster. And they're just kind of like laughing it off, like whatever, bro, right? It's, I'm not excusing those things. Like I don't think dogs should be getting that intense about these types of behaviors, right? But you learn to establish this relationship with your dog sometimes where it's like, listen, I'm gonna tell you when I don't like what you're doing and you can try to tell me when you don't like what I'm doing, but ultimately I have to say so in things. And you kind of have that like mutual respect and especially when you're dealing with certain breeds, you're not gonna take that out of them. You know what I mean? Uh, now again, we can absolutely make this stuff better. A couple things, like I don't like the fact that it sounds like if you really, really needed to, you couldn't guarantee that you could get her to hold place as a guest is walking in the door, you know, things like that. The reactivity on the walk, all that kind of stuff. Those are things we absolutely have to get better, right? But some of the other stuff, you know, yeah. some of the other stuff we could get better, but like you're not gonna completely eliminate it, right? So that's kind of what I wanna do this week is I wanna really look at like how could we help help improve on these behavioral issues and help you understand this dog a little bit better, you know? So let's do this. Why don't you go ahead and grab the leash. Um, we're gonna we're gonna take her outside. We're gonna load her up in the car real quick. We'll take her on a quick little field trip. All right, we'll pass this last one up here and then we'll kind of pull off to the side and talk about this a little bit. Okay. Now, what we're seeing right now, as far as the reactivity is concerned, better, or worse, about the same than it normally is? Uh, about the same for like scenarios where just like, we sure. just keep going, you I know, gotcha. like. Yeah, yeah, I mean, so here's the thing. It's not horrendous by any means, you know, like we've definitely seen yeah, way worse than this, but it's not good, right? Like it's definitely something that we can improve on. Um, and, and I'm seeing a lot of, as far as your, your communications with her and stuff like that, they're a little inconsistent. This is something yeah, I, I commonly like see. Don't have a clear, yes. like. Like how do we address this? Yeah. Exactly, right? So I find people do a couple of different things, right? They're using leash a lot, right? So like we're trying to communicate sometimes with the leash, stay here, stay here, stay here, right? We're telling them, leave it, leave it, leave it. Sometimes they're saying, no, 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 right? It's like, you know, sometimes we're stopping, sometimes we're walking, this, that, and it just makes everything confusing, right? There's no, there's no conciseness for the human, for the dog, for anybody, right? So first thing that we wanna do here is we wanna create one thing that we could get the dog to do, right? When we see other dogs. And in our case, there's kinda of gonna be two things because we have the side of when there's no dogs around, how are we enforcing our walk? And then obviously when there are dogs around, how are we keeping her attention focused on us, right? So uh, what I wanna do first here, before we even worry about the dogs, is we gotta get her to a place where the walk looks a little bit better. Again, the walk doesn't look terrible by any means, but it, there's still a little bit of inconsistency with how we're enforcing it. And I think that if she were totally slack on that leash, I don't think she would stay completely next to you. She'd probably be off trying to check this out, check that out, right? So we're gonna focus on that here first. Let me take the remote from you, but I'm gonna have you keep working with her. Okay. <clears throat> All right, now, what is your walking command that you use? With me. For, use with me. Like, by my side, let's go, means she can have the leash, but she can't pull. Okay, I understand. <laughs> So, so I, you know, that's con that's normal, right? I see a lot of the trainers kind of enforce very similar to that, and I don't have an issue with it. How I look at walking, right, is I think that when you get into having multiple different types of walks, it gets super freaking confusing, yeah. right? Because it's like, how does the dog really know the difference between stay loose on the leash, stay in the heel, be completely free with no expectations, et cetera, et cetera, right? Yeah. So I teach two things on the walk, right? So one is, in our case, we just use come, which is like our with me, right? Which basically is come to me and stay with me. You can use with me, I have no problem with that, obviously. Yeah. 
As far as your, your let's go, is her more loose one you said? That one I think is confusing, right? right yeah. I would keep it as simple as with me or do you, what's your release command to use? Break. Break, yeah. right? And what does break mean? She, she's done whatever. Literally she have to do, do whatever you want to yeah. do, right? So I would keep it as simple as either with me or break, right? And break is kind of like your loose leash walk. Obviously, we don't want her yanking our arm out and stuff like that. But really, in the end of the day, if I'm telling you break, you're kind of free to do whatever, yeah. right? And I look at like, am I migrating or are you free, right? If I'm going to be walking, if I'm on a path and we're going, there's really never a time I'm going to have her just like off doing yeah. whatever she wants to do. She's pretty much gonna be in with me the entire time, right? And then, you know, if I'm giving her freedom, if we're in a field or we're gonna be doing off leash or something like that, I'm just gonna give her that break yeah. command at that point. You know what I mean? Yeah. So let's, let's keep it consistent to those two, right? Now, defining our positions here, with me or come or, you know, whatever, I don't get super rigid with like heel, you know, like you have to be like tight in line right here. Like I know I asked you when we were at the facility, when you gave her that correction, when you were kind of walking around, I said, is that because she was too far ahead, too far out to the side? You said like a little bit of both. Yeah. Now, I, I, watching you do it just for those couple minutes that you were doing it, looked like she was doing pretty well with it, right? So I don't get super nitpicky with that kind of stuff. I look at my healing or my come command or my with me or anything like that as attention. Do I have my dog's attention right now, right? Are they matching my pace? Do I feel like they're engaged with me, et cetera, et cetera, right? So we're gonna kind of keep it to that as we're doing this right now, right? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold just the handle of that leash. Perfect. What you're gonna do in a minute here is you're gonna tell her with me, we're gonna go on this path right here because there'll probably be less dogs on it. Okay. And our number one goal here right now is I want to be able to enforce that position without touching the leash. And what I mean by that is without pulling on it at all, obviously, right? So we'll be giving her the freedom to make that mistake of getting ahead, getting out to the side, whatever. And we're simply gonna be giving clear corrections for non-compliance of that command, right? How are we gonna give that clear command, or correction, I should say? You're gonna mark with no to identify the mistake like you've been doing obviously we'll give our single tap on the button here and then you'll repeat the command after so you'll tell her with me we'll start going if she gets out of position you'll tell her no I'll tap then you'll say with me again okay if she doesn't fix herself then at that point we're gonna mark with no give our tap and tell her with me again so we're having one black and white way of enforcing our parameters here right now as far as level is concerned we're gonna keep it at this 12 to start here right mm -hmm. and we'll see what happens because a lot of times you know before we get into cranking the levels up or anything like that we have to know that we're using it in a clear way to the dog first so we can actually say you're blowing off the level as opposed to you're just confused by what it is that i'm doing okay right yeah so let's give it a go once you tell her with me we'll hop on this path we'll start going this way with me and you determine when you feel like you've lost her attention at no. this point perfect it's so hard to not use that's okay we're breaking habits here right now <clears throat> and I'll tell you as we're doing this if I feel like you're getting too strict about something or anything like that. And once we get this down, we'll start adding some rewards back in and stuff. <clears throat> now as we're passing distractions and stuff, you could create a little distance as you want, but I don't want you shortening your leash. Okay. I'll go back through all my files and look at the rule they don't on. Now another thing I see people get really nitpicky about that I haven't quite seen you do yet here is looking, right? I have no problem with looking, right? She's allowed to look at stuff as long as she doesn't act on those things. This looks pretty good right now, how she's walking. Yeah. Kind of seeing a little bit of a shift in her overall temperament already. She's not as kind of on edge as she was at the beginning. And we'll kind of stay right up here. And I've got no problem with how she's walking right now. This all looks pretty good here. You know, 
for some people's standards, this would be a little wide and a little far ahead. I don't mind this. I think she's, I think she's matching pace with you. She's checking in with you pretty well. So my general philosophy with this is I kind of loosen up my parameters a little more than I'm used to, but then I stay really strict on those looser parameters that I set, right? So I'm gonna be more firm on you over those looser standards as opposed to be real naggy about the tight parameters, right? And that in itself can reduce a lot of stress on the walk for the dog. And same deal, loose on the leash here. We'll let this guy walk by. Only thing I care about right now is if she stays in that sit. Okay. So you can just keep your eyes on her. If her butt stays on the ground, it's the only thing I care about. Too shabby. All right, you'll go ahead and as soon as these people pass by, we'll tell her with me. We'll head right back up that way and we'll start making our way back towards the cars. Much better. Awesome. Sometimes this, like, it's not as complicated as you think, obviously. It just comes out, you just kind of, like, simplify it sometimes, yeah. you know? I think when we have so many commands and ways to communicate with our dog at our disposal, we can just, just overcomplicate the shit out of it sometimes, and the dog has no clue what to do, you know? <laughs> and again, it's not fixed by any means, right? But this is already way better than when we started. Let's say, like, we went out to a park, we were sitting at a picnic table, and yep. I put her in a down. Would, I mean, like, obviously this might progress, but, like, for mm -hmm. right now, if her hackles went up and she growled, but she yep. stayed in a down. I would not do anything about it. Okay. You know, listen, like we got back to when we were talking about my dog, I don't have an issue with a dog displaying discomfort. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I think yeah. that's natural. And as they're working through this stuff, that will improve, right? Mm -hmm. um, I care more about if they take that and then they act on it. Yeah. Right? <clears throat> so, you know, she stays in that down. She's like, oh, this is really hard, you know? Yeah. That's okay as long as she holds a position. Now, if I start noticing a lot of hackles, I start noticing a lot of growling, I notice a little bark here and there, mm -hmm. typically it's a telltale sign that the dog is probably going to make a mistake in a minute yes. and I'll wait for them to make that mistake so I can give them again a more firm correction for that yeah. so a loose parameter until yep. she's like she's gonna explode in like five seconds yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, so yeah, I'll wait for that mistake and then I'll get really firm on that mistake. And in a lot of cases, she's gonna understand that correction much more clearly than if I got really firm on the growling. Because in some cases, those like impulsive little like growl, twitch, this, that, like some of it is like almost like subconscious, you know? Yeah. Like they're just acting and not even realizing that they're doing it. Looks really good. Yeah. So I think we got a baseline of a couple things we need to worry about this week, obviously. So walk is typically the first thing I always start with with all the dogs, because usually that's the biggest place we could look at how to combat distractions and stuff. Um, simplifying how we're giving the command, simplifying how we're enforcing the command, obviously, and then increasing the motivation just a little bit is going to be the big thing for that. Okay. And from there, dogs are just distractions. That's it, you know? So, you know, if she's not doing it because she's busy fixating on the dog over there or something, watch it come up a little bit more here. I don't know what this guy's doing. <clears throat> um, even right there, that stop was great. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you didn't need to use that leash to, to kind of hold her back or anything yeah. like that. You know, to me, off-leash training is not, like everybody thinks it's like having the dog literally off-leash all the time, right? Which is not the case, right? Off-leash training is simply having the ability to communicate with the dog whether they have the leash on or not. Mm -hmm. And I think that every dog, unless they are quote-unquote off-leash trained, they're not really there yet. There's still work that needs to be done because if we're managing them constantly, they're not understanding clearly what it is we need them to do, right? Yeah. So y your focus on your walks should be simplifying it, being more clear about how you're correcting, mm -hmm. increasing your level a little bit, right? 
and striving for exactly what we just got there, where you could just go for a walk and maybe need to give one correction every now and then, yeah. you know? Uh, that's your biggest thing to start with here. Uh, from there, obviously, I wanna show you how to incorporate that into some of your other commands. I wanna show you how to make sure that you're keeping that attention on you, even right here. She sees that dog over there, obviously, right? But she's in a much different state of mind. Mm -hmm. We haven't done anything aside from create some consequences for not doing things. Yeah. And already she's like, okay, I see the dog over there, but I'm not getting myself all puffed up and tough and stuff like that. Cause I know I gotta pay attention to you, right? Yeah. And that's what we're striving for right now, right? And then again, once we got it, that's when we have all the fun again. That's when we start pumping them back up and, and confirming that's the correct choice. This is what I want you to do, right? Yeah. And that's balanced training, obviously, right? Yeah. So um, that's your biggest thing to focus on right now. Um, tomorrow, what we'll do is we'll focus on, like I said, incorporating that into some of your other commands with things, um, showing you how to incorporate some downstays into things, um, place command around higher distractions, things like people coming in, things like that. I'm gonna wanna get into a little bit of socialization with her. Tomorrow, we'll probably also take a look at the crate stuff, see if we see anything like that here. Okay. Um, and just overall, come up with this kind of stuff, you know, and, and, and come up with solutions for all these individual things. Okay.